video on scientific dishonesty or scientific misconduct, it's also called, in Danish we say, Vinskabli Vodelhed. What I want to do here is just to reiterate, repeat the definition, and also um, apply the definition on an example from the Resnick and Stewart article uh, in order to show how that, how this is done. So just to restate again what is actually the official, what is Danish definition, we'll see in a bit how there might be some discrepancy between how, for instance, Americans or Danes think of this. There are different scientific practices in different settings around the world. We shouldn't be surprised about that after reading Kuhn. So the official Danish definition is, and then the university, universities in Denmark, they, they follow this perception, this take. So in order for something to be scientific dishonesty, the act has to be willful or grossly negligent, really grossly careless. So this is the part of the definition, the first part that deals with the intention. And they then either have to be like deliberately intentional, willful act, or as stated here, grossly negligent. So this is a legal expression when someone is, is, is being charged with something or is being um, sentenced to something, even though that it actually wasn't a deliberate, intentional, willful act. It means you really should have known. You really should have known. It's the same with the traffic rules. You can't say, oh, I didn't know I sh wasn't supposed to drive 90 kilometers an hour here in the city. You really should have known. So that's also the, the, the criteria we put on scientists. So this is the first part of it. That goes to the researchers' behave, intent with their behavior. The second part is what they actually do. And it's not enough that they've actually done some willful cheating or that they misstated something or said something that wasn't true. Or The acts have to falsify or distort the scientific message. So it's not enough that you say something that in the end actually turns out to be untrue and you also knew it was untrue. It has to falsify or distort the scientific message. Something has to happen to that scientific message. That's sort of one the one kind of scientific misconduct, the other that, that goes to the scientific message, the the, the, the the article that you produce and whatever you write in that article, the, the message you have with it. But we also have the plagiarism part, that's where you grossly mislead about your own contribution in science, where you claim to have written something, but someone else actually wrote it. This doesn't matter whether it's true or false or whether it's distorted. It's simply about taking credit. These are the so they basically have a definition that consists of two things, but the second part, the part B, also consists of two sub things. For plagiarism, we also need the willful or grossly negligent. Usually we know what we wrote or what we didn't wrote. So again, mistakes, misunderstandings, they do occur. That is not scientific misconduct. It's important to, to, to emphasize that. And, and disagreements we have all the time. This is also emphasized in this overview. Is it because a difference of opinion concerning some norms or how we apply some methods, or how we interpret data? It's not about disagreement. It's about doing something that is just intentionally, or just very, very obviously was just not true. Um, honest errors uh, we don't really care about. Okay, so let's take this very sort of quick walkthrough of the definition that I gave here. Of course, you can, as always, just pause it and, and quickly go through it again. I want to talk about this example that is being given in the Resnick and Stewart text. I suggest that you pause the video here and, and read what is being what is being written here. Um, I'll also make a quick walkthrough of it in just a second. So what these lines here indicate is that the company Max, company Max, sorry, they had to submit some data to this Food and Drug Administration in order to get some approval for stuff. And there were sort of two different kinds of, 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 of data sets they could send in, intent to treat or on treatment analysis. We don't really have to care about what that means. It's just two different ways of approaching the data. And one of them made their drug look good and the other one made their drug look less good. They send in the kind of analysis that made their drug look good and they did not disclose the, the other kind of results. Question now is, and this is what Resnick and Stewart are debating, was this then scientific misconduct? Try to just think for a second about the definition we just got and how you would approach this, how you would, what kind of conclusion you would come up with. 
And the two things I want to say here, first, just highlight what, what they actually concluded in this article, the Resnick and Stewart article. Um, so, as I say here, we agree that Merck's actions were misleading and ethically questionable. However, there was no proof of this point that they constituted data falsification or similar kind of misconduct. So what they're basically saying is they don't know if data has been falsified. They don't know if someone intentionally looked at these two different ways of, of analyzing it and said, we'll delete this one, and just go with the other one. Um, we can assume this to be the case. We can think this is the case. But, and as stated here, we don't know if they intentionally will tell data that impacted the outcome of the research. Um, so this then really goes to, is this grossly negligent? And, and, and these Americans here, they then have a bit more cautious interpretation of it. Key thing for you would then be to try to make this explicit to what degree should one claim this? It might be difficult for you to know it. It's difficult for anyone to know because we don't know what Mac knew. This is a key thing then to put forward and make explicit. I think generally speaking, we in Denmark place a little bit more emphasis on the grossly negligent part of the definition and not focus more on the intentional part, which they seem to do here in this example. But this is just to, to illustrate, this is the requirement we have in order to be able to say whether something is scientific dishonest or not. So in this case, if we argue that this is something they should have known or lied about, well, yes, then they did falsify the scientific message. But if we don't know for sure, whatever the procedure were, maybe they always only do the uh, one version of the analysis. Maybe that's what they typically do. We don't know this for a fact. So we're quite cautious about deeming someone or a group of researchers scientific dishonest. The key thing here, if you get such an example in an exam situation, is just to be explicit about these are the criteria that we have to put in play, and this is my analysis given the information I got in the text that I'm facing.